got a bit of a special episode this time. We're over at Jim's harvesting the beans. At the same time, the guys from Astley Bridge have, uh, they've got two combines running, two big ones. They're both on tracks. The farmers give me a bit of time to come and uh, have a look at them. So I'm gonna see, and Jim has, um, well, he's got himself a, I don't know if it's brand new, but he's got himself a new combine this time. So uh, I was hoping he might let us jump up on board with him. So we've got the drone with us. We're gonna take some nice uh, drone shots. We'll put a little montage together. They run John Deere's over here. John Deere's 16 ton trailers. You know, it's all big kit, real nice kit. Laying out the straw, I guess, for a contractor. I think the, uh, the combines are CR versions of the combines, which means they're rotary combines. So they work slightly different to our one. Our combine has a straw walker, whereas their combine have twin screw, uh, I don't know what they're called, but they have twin, um, it goes through a bit of a, a drum that it works. I, I will have Jim explain it to us. He's got Jack out there with him as well. I think these combines are both fit with GPS as well. Last night or the night before they had a bit of a hiccup, the draw bar actually bent. I'll show it to you. It's um, quite something actually. Uh, the draw bar literally bent the wrong way. Uh, then a bit of a U shape. And these things happen. Uh, you know, this isn't, no, this isn't an abnormal thing during harvest. I think uh, one of his daughters is on the other trailer. I think that's Esme. They always do the grain carting, I think. Young Charlie, we're we'll going to have a chat with him back at the grain store. He's, um, he's doing um, the pushing up of the corn and looking after the grain store back there. Yeah, they've got a good little team down here. It, it works nice. And we get on with them really well. So uh, we, have a, uh, we have a real nice relationship with them. So, uh, you know, if it ever comes to the point where we need help or they need help, we, there's no questions. We jump in and they jump in where, and, where necessary, you know. These track, these old tractors, they just, ah, oh, they make a hell of a noise. I'll shut up when it comes past. 7930. Roar away as well, proper noise. That's how tractors should sound. Ag was saying, he's, uh, he said you was on about you cut some good we wheat. We cut some amazing wheat. Uh, um, we had some really, and he cut, that was, that wheat he cut was brilliant. Yeah, that yeah, over at That was absolutely fantastic. Oh, we were over the moon with that. Oh, you right, let me just say, this is Jim. I always talk about Jim because, um, yeah, we're always over Hello. at his land doing his, uh, doing the work over there. So this is Jim himself. Right, we're through. We, <laughs> Off. Yeah, we're on. We're on. Oh, we're on. Are you okay? Yeah. I was just saying, how does uh, you you explained it on a video last year or the year before? Um, how these combines differ to ours? Yeah, this is a this is a twin rotor. You can actually see a picture of it there. I don't know whether you can get that. Yeah. That shows you basically how it works. And there's two rotors that go straight from the front to the back. Right. Uh, so there's no straw walkers. No. None of this. No. It's all rotary. Yeah. Uh, you can see the speed of the rotor there. Yeah. Uh, it's, ba it's basically the same as that one, but it's got a, it's now got a pre-rotor, so it's got a new rotor underneath the seat. Oh, really? And that propels it into the main rotor, and that does make it go a lot better. Okay, and that does that increase it uh, throughput? Yeah, or? it's much better in yeah. good wheat. Yeah, and wow. it smashes the straw up a lot more. Oh, it does. Yeah, yeah. Because you obviously smash it. You, I think the rotor does 1100 RPM, and then the main drums, the main rotors are doing look. Right. Um, but in good thick wheat, yeah, it's definitely got the edge on that in thick wheat. Other than that, they're, I mean, identical. Really? Yeah, we're using the same fuel, yeah. covering the same acreage. Yeah. It's not going to make any difference in this. No. He can't get quite such a good sample as I can. No. I like the cab now. It's very, it, you know, they, our one was not, that was a nice improvement, but this is, I can see they've gone for like a black colour. Yeah, they've gone, I mean, I've, I've got no opinion on it whatsoever. No, <laughs> but it looks nice. It's nice in here, isn't it? Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And this is a 2021 or 2022? This is a year old. A year old, yeah. yeah. That's the best thing. Oh, you've got some pegs? 499 foot rest. Yeah. <laughs> and you've got GPS on this as well? Yeah, yeah, they're both the same, yeah. And how yeah. does that work? Well, you've got a dome on the top of the, on the, top of the tank. Yeah. And it picks up a receiver, and it's all here, you can see. 
Oh, and then you just set up a line here. So it's got yes. I will set a line up on the other edge in a minute. Sure. With the tram lines. Ah, oh, sweet. So that's telling you that you've got a satellite. Yeah. And then I just use it to set a straight line. We, we don't. We, they're not synchronised, so they don't. No, I know what you mean. They don't yeah. like each other much, and I'm, no. not, I'm not paying. The, <laughs> it works. I'm not paying the difference. No, no, I don't. It, you know, to set them up together across the four. No, you just do. Yeah, I know what you mean. You yeah. do half a field, you do the other half, and meet in the middle. Meet in the middle. That's right. So <laughs> I mean, it's a lovely. It's just hilarious. The two of us is just a joke. Yeah. Like I say, we did 250 yesterday. If we, if, I'd like to do 250 today, but we're doing a few more moves today. 250 acres. Yeah. yeah wow. I'd like to do that. Yeah. It's not very thick. No. We done. We did in that really thick week at, at Dennington. We did do two 200 acre days. Yeah. But we really outwork hard for that. Yeah. We were filling a um, on that thick we, we were doing about 80 ton an hour, so we were filling a trailer about every 12 minutes. Really? Yeah, we, wow. had, we had we just couldn't we had four trailers and they were just full on going Oh we, my god, yeah. We got spare oh, trailers. Sure. Have you seen the broken trailer on that? I, I you will show you a picture of that. You need to go and take a picture yeah, Charlie took Charlie showed me, I'll show yeah. you guys later on. It's yeah. quite quite something actually. Is, I've never seen that yeah. before. Like, I actually think what it is, I had it on one. I didn't have that on one of the other ones, but I actually think that um, it hasn't got a rubber bump stop on the sprung drawbar. No. And I think it's it's put so much pressure, the springs put so much pressure on the drawbar over time it's bent it. Ah. When you get a massive load on them, the yeah. others have all got a rubber bump stop. Yeah. So it sits on the bump stop which supports it. Yeah. And then once the load's gone, it's back to springing, isn't it? Yeah, I got yeah. But uh, I think. Um, it could do with a bump stop on it, but I'll, if I can do it, I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is weld it up, and I mean, just, I'll well, just literally just weld it up where it is. Yeah. And then we'll be able to tip it. We're worried about it breaking while we tip it. Yeah. So then we'll yes. be able to tip it, and then I'll take it. If he'll do it, I'll take it back to the guy who actually built it because I still know the guy. The guy who built it. Oh yeah. He's just next door. To yeah, me. no, it's worth repairing, isn't so, it? Oh yeah, yeah. So he'll build me a new drawbar. Yeah. Um, I don't think there'll be any warranty, I think it's 20 years old. <laughs> yeah, it's done alright, I don't think there'll be any warranty. <laughs> right, so on, on this new auger, Jim, I can see you've got a little um, tilting spout. I have Do you, do you yeah. control that with I your stick? I can control it from the stick, but there, oh. is, there is a problem with it. Is there? If you watch, yeah, if you watch now, look, it's up in the air. Yeah. If New Orleans are watching this, not that they are. It's, see, it only moves when you press the go button. So the trailer driver, see, did you see it move? Yeah. The trailer driver has to guess where he's going to pin well land. Right. So it's uh, oh, so really annoying. So you need to move that before it comes out, really, don't you? you want yeah. To, so yeah. You, what it should do when it comes out is go to the. As far as I can see, that's the software thing. Yes. But the other problem we've got with it is we can adjust it on these buttons. But when we adjust it on the buttons. Let me tuck you in there, Matt. <laughs> when, we, when, we, when we adjust it on the buttons, it resets it to zero, so it's absolutely infuriating. Oh, really? So we're hoping that New Holland are going to... I can't... So, basically, when I pointed it out to Turner's, they rung everyone who got one, and they all said, yeah, it's driving us flipping bonkers, yeah. because it does this adjusting... Not adjusting on its own, but it resets to zero. Yes. You have to go back in the box to... You have to go back in the box to get it reset. It's really annoying. So if I adjust it now, I can adjust that now. Yes. If I do, it'll reset to zero. So next time it'll go like this and it'll miss the train. Right. Just move out a bit recently because it's only because I'm on auto steer, just move out a little bit. That's it. But the, the thing that the thing that you can do with it, Matt, yeah. is the idea is that they can straddle the row for the balers. Yes. So that's really useful. So they don't have to I run see on that. the straw. I did mention I can that. set it to where they don't run on the straw. Yeah. But the problem with it is it resets itself. You can give him a splash if you like, Jack. He's got a little bit of a ton on the front. Um, so <laughs> it, it, it's really annoying, and I'm hoping that they're going to. So the spout's now reset. Yeah, you see, it's, so now it's off. It's gone back, and it'll go. Back, so now it's gone back in. Yeah. But it doesn't set to where you want it. It's just daft. Yeah. It's, you know, so you want to see a, you want to see an upgrade. We want to see a, the software sort out on it. Yeah. What I find odd is that now I've pointed it out to them. They've rung everyone who's got one, and they've all gone. Yeah. It's, drives us mad. Yeah. So it's a great idea because you can keep them on the swath. Yes. And actually I've got a shorter spout than Jack, which is great because the shorter it is, the safer it is, isn't it? Yeah. You're less likely to hit stuff. Yeah. Um, I've seen those giant um, 
the giant combines that have them, they tilt right in the back. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it, I like the fact that the spout's shorter. Yeah. Because it's it's just, you know, it's not got so much weight in it, has it? Oh, that's jacket. So I will have to do something creative now. Because this is <laughs> You need a uh, when you got, got two combines. You need you need thinking drivers. Yeah. And Jack's a thinking driver. Yeah. So it's, Jack's so it's good. It's quite rare we get in each other's way. But there he is. <laughs> so um, oh, one of us. Right. I should think of a bit of luck. He might go down the middle in a minute. And you were you were going to show us how this auto steer works? Oh yeah. Now? It won't steer here now. Oh, you do it on the. It, I've put a straight edge in on that edge. Yeah. And on the screen. It's really, there's nothing. There's nothing to really. You can really see, man. No. It's not that it picks up a GPS signal. Yeah. And it will just put a. Um, it will just use your just, direction. You just put the... an AV line in. Yeah. And once that's set, it then just guides the width 8.9 we've got in here. It guides in 8.9s across the field. Yeah. And it's re it is good when it's working. It's great. It's great on the flat. Yeah. But it, it can be quite annoying because it just misses a bit. And you think, oh, Yes, you know. I know what you mean. When it just wanders yeah. that tiny bit. So because yeah. I put the straight edge in on that land, yeah, I've got. A, I'm, I'm, I'm freestyling this. I'm driving. Yes. And is that a free version of the GPS, or no, is it? I, a, pay, I pay two or three hundred pound a year for it. Yes, it's I just know. not as yeah. good as the deer. No. The deer stuff we don't pay for. No. We have it all on. We buy the six thousand domes, which are. The, yeah, they're good. Domes. Well, they're the best ones at the moment. Yeah. So we buy the deer domes. I don't even buy new. I buy second-hand screens, they all work really well in the deer, but I don't pay for the signal. No. And we're putting all the spraying lines in with the sprayer, all with that free signal. Yeah, We're wow. paying for this, and I wouldn't say it's as good as the free deer. No. But it annoys me that I have to pay for it, because I don't yes. pay for the deer stuff. No. I know what you mean. So. Whoa. This is Barley, is it? This is Barley, yeah. yeah. Um, one of their friends. Um, Barley's been doing, uh, Barley's actually been doing corn cars since she was about 15. She yeah. used to, because what we used to do is just keep her in the field all the time. So the girls, the other girls that did road work, and she'd just stay with me all day, just keep jump, just keep tractor hopping. Yeah. She couldn't drive on the road. But obviously now she can drive on the road, so she drives on, does all that herself. Um, I mean, they're used to doing it on banks. Yeah. Oh yeah, you've yeah, got a lot of steep lovely, banks. It's lovely and flat here, but it's very steep on the other farm. Yeah. Ooh. And the trailer drags, doesn't it? If you're all going yeah. across, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They, the worst thing is they get a lean on. Yeah. You know, if they, you know, we and we just won't, we just won't fill them right up, Matt, on a really no. steep bank. So I'm a bit miffed about the drawbar because all of these trailers, I've had the drawbars reinforced. Yeah. And you can't see it, but that I'm pretty sure that one has. They've got extra steel inside the drawbar. Yes. So although it looks the same externally, yeah. it's got extra steel welded inside it yeah. um, to make it stronger. And what, but what we're going to do with that, the one that's broken, because I, I know you'll show a video on that, yeah. the one that's broken, wait, you walk to this bit of front. Yeah, well, I'll go um, back and I'll go Like I say, we'll weld it up and then we'll be able to tip it. We'll just weld it up solid and then get a new drawbar. Yeah. And how many tons will it hold in your hopper? Seven, eight. Seven or eight. Yeah, yeah, that's, a, more larger. that's a lovely machine. Unbelievable. Wow. And they're both on tracks, these machines, so on a wet year, for compaction reasons, um, you know, they just skate over the ground, cover the weight, they spread their weight load over a bigger area, so uh, they don't create as much compaction. And apparently on the hills they're a little bit better as well, so uh, that's what they tell me. There's a few oats in here, same as ours, oats everywhere. You can't, you can't, um, yeah, just a right pain in the butt. So Jim was in there telling us about this drawbar. What happened the other day? It was. Was it yesterday? Yesterday, filled her up, and yeah. uh, she just she's obviously got a little crack in it, and then it decided just to oh. bend as I was unloading. Yeah, you can see it. See, normally if somebody's got a full load on and they're ragging it down the track, yeah. that spring will break. Yeah. See that spring going there? Yeah. yeah. But we were going slow because it was on a mole plough field, so it was rougher anyway. Yeah. And it's just given up. And there's a lot of wheat in these, isn't there? You fill one of these, what's that? Seventeen ton? Yeah, nearly. Yeah, nearly yeah. seventeen ton. Yeah, Jim was saying he's a 20 years old or something. Yeah, he loved him. What's your story? What's your sign? It's like we're twin flames in a different life. Deep connection, lights a spark. It's like you know me in the depths of my heart. We're dreamers.
With Jack, so we're gonna have a little ride on with Jack. More spring wheat, Jack? Yeah, more disappointing spring wheat. Disappointing? Is it? What? Um, I, I didn't ask you, huh? What, what is the yield? Uh, well, at the minute it says we're doing three tons to the hectare. To the hectare? So. Not the finest crop then? No. But it wouldn't matter, just over one ton. Is it? Well, we had that last I think we had that last year and the year before. 2.5 would be one ton. Yes, it was. The first fields we cut, they were alright. Yeah. And um, but I thought they weren't that great, and I thought all oh, the well, other fields are going to be better because they're wetter fields. Yeah. And it's droughted. Yeah. So I rode one up, and I thought, oh, it's not that great. We'll chop, we'll chop the other one, Everton, the short up by the motorway. Yeah. We'll chop that, and, um, and then we'll and then we'll grow up the rest because it'll be better straw. Yeah. Water of stage. And there's a lot of oats about in there. We found that everywhere there is just oats everywhere. We actually had, um, well, you'd have seen it by now. There's, um, we had a guy come because down at um, Peter's farm, yeah, it was so thick. We had a guy come and literally take the tops of the oats off. It was that bad. What's it like driving this? Is this is it easy? The combine. Yeah. yeah. Literally nobody has offered me to drive a combine this <laughs> year. I'm not you asking you to. You <laughs> no, no, I don't want to break it. I, I, can you start a stag? He'll get you on this, or is he finished now? Um, no, they're on the beans. I've left him to it. He's I'll be honest with you, Matt, it's a piece of piss. Basically, this is your forward and backward, like you know. Yeah. So, it's a hydrostatic drive. So yeah. It's a complete step, but you select a gear when you're stationary. Yeah. And then that gives you, not, I think, 10 k is the max in gear two. Yeah. And then middle stop, and then backwards. That's the reel. Up and down in and out and all yeah. you do the key of the reel is just to have it ever so slightly faster than you are going forward yeah so it just keeps tipping the heads forward yeah then the we got a 30 foot header on this one as well haven't we? yeah 30 foot on this one that's your header that's your header up and down yeah and side to side but all of that's a load of rubbish because you've got your two presets yeah so i've already told it that like this is the position i'm happy with so yeah. when i get to the end of the rub in a minute, I'll double tap that, yeah. and it will lift it up, and it will drop. I've asked it to drop the reel down and swipe the swipe the last remaining crop in, so yeah. it doesn't fall off. And then when we, when we turn around and go back again, you hit it once, and it will drop it to the height that we've already set, yeah. which is seven roughly. Well, a little bit. Yeah. And then this is all just rotor speed. And you've got GPS on this one as well. Yeah. GPS on this one as well. 
Jim was quite happy with his, um, he had little foot pegs or something. Oh, yeah, he was quite happy with those. They look comfortable. <laughs> and um, this, is a, this is a track machine as well, isn't it? So yeah. you, pretty much identical machines. How yeah. do you find the tracks versus wheels? Rough. Like rough rough and ride. difficult to turn. Yeah, the wheels are much comfier, but I but probably knew if you go when it comes to compaction like, though in the in, in a wet year yeah. you'd be winning. But over at his, like that that tractor wouldn't pull that trailer up the hills at his with with it full. Yeah, like it would, but on the stubble it's so slippy that they get really spinny. Yes. Yeah, you got them in four wheel drive and, and all the, this. Bit. Even those big ones are struggling. And this with the tracks, it just keeps going up, and it and it's got a bigger tank, so we can go from the. You can get if you unload at the top. You can get down to the bottom and get back up again before you have to unload again, yeah. rather than they have to follow you down. Right. But also, the other thing is, if you go and look at your stubble, because you're on wheels, your stubble does this. Yeah. The head has done this yeah, yeah, all yeah. the time, it's really wavy. Yeah. Whereas if you look at this stubble, it's really smooth. Yeah. What was your other combine? Was your other combine a 30 foot header as well? Oh, 25. 25. And it was on wheels. How do you find it? Because it looks way bigger. Yeah, it's not really. It, but honestly, it the, the two things that are awesome, do you remember me and Pete used to have we always were digging soil out of the front. Yeah. So this one has got a skid in the middle. Yeah. Below uh, the middle of the header. So the gaps between the three skids yeah. is like, um, so I don't know, it, it does like, a better job with keeping it off the dirt. Yeah, because the skids are what, two foot each and they're not right at the ends. So it's like the gaps are like 10 foot between the skids. Yeah. Whereas the old one, there was only two skids and they were right at the end. Yeah. So, so it never knew what was happening in the middle. So it used to eat soil in the middle for yeah, so the time. Yeah. yeah. If you had a ridge in the middle, oh, you'd be digging the soil. Joking yeah. mad, which is what that little tool that I made that's sitting on the steps of probably Trip Trip as you came in. Oh, really? But I can probably scrap it now because I don't seem to need it. <laughs> But yeah, that's made the world of difference. And the tracks, they sit so firmly because the wheels have like play in them, don't they? Yeah. So the header does this. Yeah. Whereas the tracks sit so square. Yeah. It judges your back, but you do. Um, so what do you do. prefer then? I think these are better, but to actually sit in and drive, possibly the wheels. Yeah. Also, I bet it all depends on the year as well. You get a dry year like this year, the wheels come in. But if you get a, a wet year, you, your tracks are going to be doing you a job because all the weight is going oh, to be yeah. spread isn't and, in, and also in the wet year I, should, I don't really know yet because I've only had it for this year but in yeah. a wet year I imagine the tracks aren't following the shape of the ground so badly so no. they're probably a lot smoother yeah the other Jim's thing wasn't is, when I was sat in his it wasn't so noticeable no well, he's got rounded so the tracks in his are rounded bottom right ever so slightly hmm. which I believe is to help with the steering more than anything because this is such a flat based track the steering is pretty, pretty slow and steady Right, whose job is it to fill the trailer? Yours or theirs? That's Barge's job on this time, their job. She can't see over the back, so how does she know how much is there? She knows that the front of the trailer, when it's a certain distance across the front of my reel, it should be at the back. But to be oh, fair, okay. the other lot, they're in bigger tractors, they can just about see. Yeah. So, um, Jim said about 17 tonnes of wheat in those. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's right? pretty, it's not very great, so obviously, and it's only really dry, so it's only 11%, so 12%, so it's um, getting a lot in the trailer. We had a draw bar snap yesterday. I see it, I've got a picture of it. It is. That's something exciting. else, isn't it? I've oh, never seen. Char was loving it. <laughs> Add it to the... Uh, uh, things happen, mate. That's, uh, that's well, quite We had normal. a fire on the combine the night before. Did you? We nearly set fire to ours uh, last night. Did Accidentally, you? yeah. How did you do that? Uh, Barry wanted to see the engine, so I opened the cover and dropped the straw. Let's see how good she is then. Around the bend. Go on, Barge. She's actually smashing that. Mate, she made that look easy. <laughs> yeah, she has oh, made that look easy. Empty, that'll do. How much do we hold in this one? Eight tons as well? Yeah, same as yeah. Jim's. Sorry about that, Nick. Thought you smashed it, Barge. You might as well take that back. So you know how your stone trap works, or not? Uh, yeah, so you. Yeah, I have seen it before. So your, your stone trap, it comes up here and you've got the drum in here. Yes. And if a stone hits the drum, it knocks it down and there's like a, there's like a sheet, like a, almost like a sheet trough underneath. Yeah. That, it, that they land in. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, or every morning when you go and start, you just open it up and drop the chest of stones out. Yeah. We don't have that, it goes straight into the rotors. If the stone got in there, it would fuck it. Right. So, you see this door here that's opened up? 
Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. So if a stone comes into the straw elevator, yeah. there's microphones that pick up the tingling of the stone. Yeah. With a bit of wood and it drops that door and that just lets all the straw that's going up into there fall out on the floor. And can you see the stone? No, because it's already out on the floor and it did it when we were on the other run. Oh, right. Literally so it did it, it as, we, as, we were, as we ended the run, it did it. It just drops it straight out on the floor. Wow. All the straw and the stone. If you go and have a look, we might be able to find it in the road over here. That's, uh, that's high tech, that is, isn't it? Yeah. So then you have to stop and reset it. Right, and then you've got to close the... Oh, there it is, look. I can see it. Yeah, there it is, look. So you took in there and then it dropped it out straight away before it went through the combine. Before it went through the combine, that dropped That out. would have made a mess. That would have made a huge mess. A <laughs> massive mess. So that system just saved you a lot of arse. That's probably it? the biggest stone I've taken in. Really? Oh God. I feel terrible. I feel like I'm distracting you or something. There we go. I think our one, we have to manually release it every morning. Yeah, whereas that might do that a couple of times a day, five times a day. Really? So you get out, do you have to then close it No, I don't have to get out, I can do it from the cab. Oh, you I was just getting it. out to show you. Oh, right. But the, um... Wow. So, the, the reason that's taken that in is because it's so thin and we're going so fast. Yeah. And then when we're coming onto the headland, if you think about how that we've drilled it this way at this point. Yeah. So then it's the, the, the grounds we're, we're cross, we're, rather than going with the drilling, we're then yeah. crossing the drilling at the end, yeah. and it's just picking it, flicking it in with the. Yeah. Give me now. I can't believe that's just done that. Yeah. And will it will it chew up your flight on your um, auger? No, literally just pushed it straight in. Yeah. You know what? You'd often notice something like that, but because we're coming to the end of the run. Yeah. I'm picking it up. The only thing that's worrying about that is. It won't drop the stone track, it can't drop the stone track floor when it's in the air. No. And um, we were lifting as it did it. Yeah. Which is why it went in. Yeah. So we were probably that far away from that stone going straight through the combine. Put the reverse feeder on. We know the stone's fallen out, but just in case there's something else or part of that stone in the edge. Yes. We're reversing it now. Yeah. So that's... How do you do that? Hit the reverse, turn it off, hit the reverse or oh, you've got a button, button, and then you use the back button behind the yeah. stick, and then you use the real speed buttons. Ah. So that's reverse, and then that goes forward again. Yeah. So reverse it out to make sure it's empty. And you, when you press and hold, so that button there, if you hold that for three seconds, it opens the stone trap door. Right. So if you press and hold it, and then you have to lift it all the way to the top, and when it bangs the top, then let go of the button, that will let the catchings, the catches go back. Yeah. So now it's sucked that trap back up. Yeah. So now. Yeah, so now we should we're alright, see. So now it's all relapsed. But if we hit a stone there, now it will do it again. Yeah. There we go. That's what happens when you hit a stone. Cool bit of kit. Yeah, so because this is a road three, when it when the straw gets to the top of the elevator, it goes into the lateral concaves. Yeah. So, once the stone's in there, there's no way of stopping the stone. No. Whereas yours, your drum is uh, across the face, isn't it, of yeah. the straw elevator. Yeah. So as the stone comes up, the drum's coming round and knocking the straw. And uh, as it's, hang on, so it's just shot like that. As it's knocking it, if it hits a stone, it basically knocks the stone through, like, into this trough at the bottom. Yeah. And the stones can sit there all day. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know, yeah, I know what you mean. And then you just open them. Yeah. Which is really, uh, Jim's new combine, it's got one of those drums, so that now has that as well. Ah, okay, yeah. I think that is brilliant, you it's know, awesome. that's just saved you. It's great, it's a bit, it's a bit annoying, but it's what happens is if you're in a big swath of straw and you don't quite drive right when it happens, then, tree, 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 yeah, <laughs> then, uh, <laughs> then you get the straw caught in the door when you try and relatch it, yeah. and that stops it relatching. Ah, uh, the yeah. So then, uh, and then you've got to get out and move the straw. Once you've got the hang of it, it's not too bad. No. Oh, sweet, there we go. Look at that. I can't believe that stone's gotten through it. I know, that's cool, isn't it? That's literally because we're crossing the...